Hey guys, Steve here. So, I got asked a question in the comments uh, on one of the vi videos um, to do a tutorial on serving up some HTML, CSS, JavaScript content from our Spring Boot applications. Um, so, and along with that, maybe you know, do a do a, a simple front end app which allows the user to input some data and it gets to the back end and then interacts with the database and you know responds back with some more some more data. So that's it's quite a lot to try and fit into one video so I'm gonna kind of split it up in, in into two. Um, in this video here I'm gonna talk about um, you know how do we how do we serve up some static content from our spring spring apps. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into two different things and uh, number one would be you know static content actual HTML and CSS content and maybe some JavaScript that you know doesn't change so it is actually static um, and then also I'm going to go into um, some more dynamic stuff which is using some sort of template en engine so we're basically going to use Spring's MVC framework so the model view controller framework to actually um, you know create some more kind of dynamic uh, HTML co content and actually serve that up from our from our app. Um, so let's have a look at look at it wor working here. So I'm starting with a pretty simple app here. Um, so I'm only I importing the the web dependency. So Spring Boot Starter Web, and the only other thing I have here is my simple uh, application starter class. Um, so that's that's all I'm going to need for now to really serve anything up from, you know, any static content up from here. So Spring by default kind of um, gives you a couple of folders um, that you can also configure, you know, the names and whatever where where they are. But uh, we're just going to use the defaults here. So. Um, if we want to uh, serve up some static content from our app, uh, there's a sp specific place where we need to store it. So, um, basically, here under our source main Java folder and source main resources folders, basically, the source main Java folder, as its name might suggest, is going to contain all of our Java class files where we where, where we Going, where we're going to be writing basically all of our backend code. Now, the source main resources folder is a little bit different where um, it can hold, it's it's basically meant to hold a number of different things. Um, so we can have configuration files in there, we can have, you know, different types of files in there that we, that we need to use within our application. Um, but we can also have our static HTML content in there. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create a folder inside the resources folder called static and it's within that static folder then that we put our HTML uh, files and CSS files and JavaScript files that we want to serve up. So just to prove that it works I'm just going to create a simple HTML file it's going to be called index, uh, change the title shouldn't have happened. Okay. And we're just going to put a header saying hello world here. So now what's going to happen here is when, when our application starts up and it packages itself up, it's going to make this static folder available on the class path of the application. Um, so it's going to be pretty much embedded in the kind of jar file that we that we produce from our build. Um, and then any any requests that hit a you know the, the the root context of the application, which is just in our case is going to be localhost colon eighty eighty, um, they're going to be redirected to the kind of the first available piece of content that's here. So the first available piece of content that's here is going to be the index file within our static directory. Um, 
So let's see that working. So if I come back here to the application and we hit uh, run app, should start up and we can see that it's available on port 8080. If we go to our browser and type in localhost 8080, we can see we have our index.html file served up. So you can see the message. The message here is just a header one with hello world and we can see that the title itself is tutorial. So now what about say something, some sort of CSS file maybe. Um, so what, what we can do is we can, we can dump them all in the same directory if we want but what I usually like to do is kind of separate my code out into some sort of logical structure. So I'm going to create a folder called CSS and I'm going to create a style sheet inside that. I'm just going to call it style.css and just to prove that it works, uh, we're just going to change the text color of any, you know, H1 tags that are that we have in our code, and let's change it to red. So basically, it's going to change the text here uh, when it's when it's displayed within the browser to to be red. Um, but before we can do that, we need to obviously. Um, link to our style sheet and we should have our should be able to kind of auto, auto complete the folder and that's it so um, when I re restart this app it's going to serve up everything that's in this static folder um, by default so if I restart this And when I refresh, we should see now that we have uh, Hello World is in red text because the CSS is after changing the color of the text. Um, now for simple JavaScript stuff, um, again, it's exactly the same. So I'm just going to create a JS folder and I'm going to create a JavaScript file called alert.js and all it's going to do is it's going to have a function called alert and it is going to do alert. Actually, I probably should change the name of that to show alert so we don't have any conflicts. So it's going to alert and JavaScript is working. Okay. So then, obviously, in my HTML content again, I need to um, add that script here. So I'm just going to create a script tag. Um, type equals application JavaScript uh, source equals in our JS folder, and it's going to be alert.js. Close that. And I guess if we just create a, let's create a button that has an on click and on that click it's going to execute the show alert function that we had in our JavaScript. And I think we can put some text here to just show the alert. And if I restart that app now, And we should have our heading, which is red, and we should have a button saying show alert. And when I click it, we can see JavaScript kicking in and, and the JavaScript is working. So that's um, how we kind of, how we serve up. So we served up HTML, we served up CSS, we served up JavaScript, all by putting it within this static directory. Um, so you could simply do stuff here like, um, you, you know, introduce something like jQuery, start writing all of your JavaScript files using J, jQuery to make your, your HTML content more dynamic. And that's one option you could have. Um, you could introduce 
you know, different um, frameworks like uh, Bootstrap or something to make your your app look a little bit prettier. Um, let's just let's just show you, uh, I guess, two ways that we we can do that. So one way is we just follow the. So now we'll do we'll do Bootstrap here. So one way we can do it is do the the regular thing. We can we can probably download the files ourselves and then copy them into the static directory, but that's not really a good way to do it. Um, we could use the get started thing here and just use the CDN here, um, which is just another link to a style sheet. So I could add that in up here. So just directly copy and paste it from um, the getbootstrap.com site. So that's going to pull in my the actual bootstrap min.css, so it's going to make bootstrap available to my app application. So let's see that working. Restart. Wait for startup. And when I refresh this page now, my heading and my button should look a little bit different because it's now using kind of bootstrap CSS as well. You can see my JavaScript is still, is still working. So that's one way you could link to something like Bootstrap, you could do the same with uh, something like jQuery by adding a script tag here that points at the CDN where they have the, the jQuery, jQuery min uh, CSS file, or sorry, JavaScript file. Um, another way we can do it is we can get rid of that. Um, if we look here in our log files that our application is splitting out, we have a mapped URL called web jars. Now, this comes in very, very handy for introducing things like jQuery or Bootstrap or some other, you know, UI frameworks or JavaScript frameworks that we might want to use. Um, and I'm going to show you how to actually do that. So, um, we have a web jars directory. Um, if we go to webjars.org. This is like, um, you know, Maven has its uh, art repository that you can search for any artifacts or libraries that you may want to use. Um, webjars also has its same thing, which is this. So, so you can see here it has, you know, hundreds of um, different options here. So one of them here is Bootstrap. So let's actually use that. So if I hit the, you know, what build tool am I using? So I'm using Maven. So if I hit that Maven tab there, it actually shows me the uh, dependency tag that I need to copy and paste in. So let's copy that. And let's go to my palm file and paste it in here. So that now, um, Basically, when I build my application, it's going to build Bootstrap um, into the app application itself, so into the jar, jar file that's uh, produced at, at the end. Um, and then again, all I need to do is create my link, style sheet again, href. Then I just need to point at the web jars direct directory. You can see now that because I have that there, it's actually, my IDE is, has picked that up. It's giving me the option to choose the web jars directory. In here, I should have a bootstrap directory, version 4.0.0. Should be a CSS directory under there. And then we have bootstrap.min.css. So that's taking that C CSS file directly from my application instead of reaching out to the web and, and actually downloading it. Um, so let's restart this and just make sure that we get the same result. So I'll restart it and go back here and refresh and we can see it looks exactly the same as we had before. Now, so that's so that's kind of static content. You, you, you know, you can you can add all the all the HTML files, all the JavaScript files, all the CSS files you want here, 
Um, you can even use web jars to introduce something like jQuery and you know make that content that you have in the static directory more dynamic by you know writing a jQuery app application inside in that static directory. Um, but another way we can do it is we can you actually use um, Spring's MVC framework out, out of the box which basically MVC stands for model view controller so in a couple of uh, tutorials previous to this we we learned about controllers and what they do um, so just a, a brief recap is a controller basically it exposes an endpoint um, which we can call over HTTP so we can call it from a browser and what it does then if you're using the mod, the MVC framework um, the other two components obviously we've talked about the controller already the other view other two components are the model and the view so basically what the spring framework allows us to do is it, it allows us to basically construct this model object and we can add any attributes and values we want to it that we would like to add then we can create a corresponding template that's going to take that model and it's going to produce some HTML output basically the template is, is kind of a HTML file with, with all the different placeholders for the actual uh, attributes that are added to the model. So the MVC framework takes the model and it takes the template, puts them together and it spits out a, some HTML content and then it sends that back to the browser to be, uh, to be displayed. So let's have a look at that at that working, and then we'll we we'll call this call time on this video uh, before we move on to something else. Um, so what I'm going to do is for now I'm going to uh, delete this static folder, just get rid of all the stuff that we have here. Um, and for the MVC framework to work, um, we need to import a. Um, a different dependency basically we need to import our templating engine and spring out of the box allows us to use uh, time leaf templates so let's import that so we can import spring boot starter time leaf by imp importing this uh, we get all the web stuff um, as well so we only need to Im import this uh, we don't need to import this and the web dependency because this one pulls in the web one as a transient dependency. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to create a controller first. So let's create a package, we we'll call it controllers and let's create a new class in here and we're going to call it index controller um, because whenever we hit local host 8080 we want to um, have something listening on that root context so it, it can handle some requests so it's going to be controller obviously now it's going to have a request mapping and it is going to listen on forward slash for any requests so if we hit localhost 8080 it's going to come in here and hit this request mapping and we're going to have a method with a public string and uh, let's call it greeting so basically let's say and it's going to return um, a string called index. So, so simply we'll, we'll we'll expand on this in a in a second. But simply here, what's going to happen is when whenever we hit localhost 8080, it's going to hit this request mapping. 
it's going to enter into this uh, method and it's going to return a string saying index. So that's going to, I'm pretty sure it's going to tell um, the MVC framework to load the index template. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is I need to, um, in the resources folder, create another directory called templates. So this is the, direct, the directory where all, all the templates get stored. I'm going to create a new file, and HT, not a CSS file, a HTML file. And we're going to call an index, and yeah, HTML5. Now I'm just going to do a quick search for something. So I'm going to go to the spring.io website, have a look up in projects, I kind of know where this is. Um, and there's a serving web content link here on the right hand side if, I, if anybody wants to you know, go through this themselves. Um, but I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm going to grab the HTML file here. And I'm going to copy and paste that into where? Into here. So what this is doing here is it's going to have um, so it's it's HTML content obviously, but it has this extra XML namespace here um, for for the uh, timeleaf.org website. If you want to know more about timeleaf, you can actually go to this site, and it has all the, all the documentation here. So for any um, timeleaf kind of placeholder stuff that we want to add to this te template. We prefix it with this th, so so you can see here in in the body we're creating a paragraph, um, and basically it it's it's just a p tag, and then within the p tag we have this um, funny looking thing here. So it's using the time leaf um, XML syntax here. So we've got the the namespace for timeleaf then colon and then the actual um, thing we want to do so we're saying hey timeleaf print some text into this paragraph here and that text is going to be whatever is in this um, uh, these double quotes so it's going to print out hello comma space then it's it's going to inject a attribute now we need to add this attribute to our model and um, so we can actually you know have that have that displayed there so what we need to do is we need to go to the controller and we need to add some parameters into our uh, greeting me method so what we can do simply is we can just have the model and it's just called model and we can say model dot add attribute and the name of our attribute was simply name as we can see here from our template there and then we just give it a value so I'm going to give it the value world, close that. So now this has basically, this is the model. So we have added an attribute to the model called name. We're telling it we're going to use the index template. So it's going to take this index template from the templates directory and it's going to apply the model to the template and it's going to replace this name attribute with the value that we provided on our model which was world and then it's going to um, spit out some HTML content so or it's going to spit out some properly formed HTML content so let's have a look a look at that working now Start up our app. 
And it started listening on port 8080 again. So if I go to localhost 8080 again, hit refresh, I can see I have the message, hello world. Now if I go and uh, inspect and get my uh, Chrome tools up, open, um, you can see here that if we look at the, the template file and we look at the actual HTML content that we've got, looking at the, P, the, the paragraph tag in particular, you can see it's a properly formed paragraph with an opening and closing tag and the hello world messages inside that tag. Whereas in our template file, we just, we just defined the paragraph as kind of a placeholder and we're telling the timely templating engine that it's going to create a paragraph tag with this content inside it. And before that, it, it, it actually does that, it obviously takes what's in the model and it takes the name attribute from the model, gets the value and it replaces this part with the value. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's pretty much what's happening. Now, say we wanted to, I, I, I don't know, change the message that comes back here. How would we how would we maybe do something like that, right? Um, there's there's many way many many ways to do it. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you a quick and simple way to do it, just to prove that uh, you know the template's going to generate the content every time we we try and change something. Um, what I'm going to do on my request mapping here in my method, I'm going to look for a request parameter. So that's kind of a query parameter. So if you know the, the uh, structure of URLs, you know, um, at the end of them, you can have like a question mark and then some key value pairs after it to kind of, you know, provide some values to this to the server. Um, so the request param and the value equals name. So we're going to have uh, a request parameter called name and it's going to not be required. We're going to set the required flag to false and we're going to set a default value on it of world. And we obviously have to give it a property. So this is basically saying for any request that hits the root context, look for a query parameter called name. If you find it, take the value that's been provided and stick it into this name variable. If you don't find it, stick the value world into this name var variable. And then we can use that name variable here instead of world. So we can basically manipulate the model from our uh, browser uh, address bar. So let's restart that and see it working. So if I just do a refresh, I can see that it still prints out hello world. If I go to the actual root context, uh, question mark name equals Steve. I can see now that the message says hello Steve and I can go hello Bob and take it off again and hit enter and it's back to hello world so it's back to whatever the default was. Um, so that's kind of one way that we can um, send content to the back end and kind of manipulate what comes back to us. Um, obviously, obviously you can get more in depth with that and actually you know, take whatever's in those query per parameters and maybe run a search on a database and get whatever results from there that you can and basically add those results to the model and then you know, have a template that deals with those results from the database 
and you know produce your HTML content that way. Um, but we're not going to go into that in this video. We've been going on for nearly 30 minutes now, so I'm going to call time on this one. Um, but in the next um, episode, um, I look at maybe using this uh, tutorial we have here using the Time Leaf templating engine in the Spring MVC framework and introduce uh, MongoDB where we can store some to do items and, uh, and maybe have a form where we can actually submit some data and store it in the database and get the list of to-dos back and display them in, in a list using a template. Um, but anyway, if you like this video and you're looking forward to the next one, obviously subscribe to the channel and hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload the next episode. Um, and obviously, once again, thanks for watching. See ya.